But there's one thing I might, I'd, I'd just like to jump in on this, and it's not on any of the slides, but how many of you have heard that statistic that 70% of all acquisitions fail? Is that, you've heard of that? Yeah, yeah. And if you're looking at an uh, acquisition program, Ed, um, you, you need to be prepared on uh, the naysayers to say, well, did you know 70% of all acquisitions fail? So, and, and there's strong statements. Uh, Forbes recently came out with a statement in one of their articles that said, you know, when all the dust, the dust settles, when all the if, ands, and buts have been examined, 70% fail. So, to me, if I look at 30,000 or 40,000 M&A transactions every year, to me it's inconceivable that 70% of those are failures. Like if there were, that line would just be cratering down to zero, right? So, so what we did is we dug in a little bit to say, why, why is that that people are saying 70% of all acquisitions fail? And the reason um, is a lot of this, the research takes place around <clears throat> public companies buying public companies and comparing the stock price around the date of acquisition. And if the stock price dips at all in the few days after the acquisition, it's considered a failure. Okay. Now, uh, if you believe in, in uh, efficient capital markets, then uh, and, and I, I think that our capital markets in the West are fairly efficient. Uh, you would know that the, uh, the announcements of public acquisitions have already been in the press for a long period of time. They've been in months, right? The speculation and then the announcements have been there for months. And that transaction is already fully priced in the share price, right? So, uh, so once it's completed, it takes some of the pressure off the share price, and it would be a logical thing to see the share price drop by 1%. And to me, that does not warrant the descriptor of a failure. 